This is about how not to be affected by people. For people, for, for us, the source of joy on earth a lot of time came from people. But the source of pain is also from people. Have you noticed that if you count the pains you have are mostly from people? If you if we learn not to be affected by people and have a heart to bless them, then we have victory in this area. Shortly after I experienced the Holy Spirit, one time I called someone to tell her that about my experience. And she did not accept the work of the Holy Spirit and she was angry. And she yelled at me and he hang up, she hung up the phone. And then I found that I lost the joy when I prayed. So the Holy Spirit reminded me that I need to handle this. I haven't done anything wrong to share with her. But I said to her, if I make you unhappy, I'm sorry about it. Lakini akachivu yule mpendo ya kwamba kama nimekufanya we kutokuwa na fra, basi nisame. But she was still, you know, I called her up again and told her, you know, I'm sorry if I make you unhappy. I called her. Tena, ali jaribu tena kumpigia si mara ya pili na kusema pole kama nimekufanya we kutokuwa na fra. And she was still angry and she hung up the phone a second time. And then after I hang up the phone, I said, I have taken care of this problem already. She, didn't, she just didn't accept it. She didn't accept it. Okay. So it's not my fault. So I said to myself that I cannot be responsible for her feeling. And I decided to let go. And then when I pray, I, the joy of the Lord came back to me. And the Lord spoke to me and said, from now on, if you face any people's trouble, handle it like this. And even if we have, I have done nothing wrong, I can still apologize for making a person unhappy. And responded to the person's feeling. Now, And if the person doesn't respond, then I will just let go. And now, compared to the past, I was really tortured by some people's negative comments of me. Before I experienced the Holy Spirit, I find it very hard to overcome this influence, but negative influence of people. I remember for years I could have burden and fear because someone was. Gossiping about me or complaining about me. 
na uh, uh, kabla ya kujaza na Roma takatifu angelikuwa na uchuku watu wakimsengenya na watu wakisunguza jiji yake na hilo jambo halingemtoka haraka I find it very difficult to overcome the negative feelings brought by people brought by negative people Ilikuwa ni ngumu sana kum, kumsamea mtu ama mtu kutoka katika mawazo yake ikiwa anasunguzia kinyume chake But after I experience the Holy Spirit I find a way to have the joy of the Lord na baada ya kuwa na kupokea Roho Mtakatifu akapokea furaha itokayo kwa Mungu. And I found a way how to turn off the negative influence of people. Na akapata njia ya ya pia kusaidia wale ambao anaweza kuwa na uchungu anapo anaposunguziwa na mwingine anakasirika na hilo jambo linabakia kama kidonda. Once in a while I still I still face accusation or attack from people. Hata hivi vile unavyomuona hiyo pia watu wanamzungumzia kinyume na wakitaka ni kama kumkasirisha lakini anaelewa vile ya kushinda hayo majaribu. But now I overcome it very quickly. Lakini anashinda haraka sana. I know that many people, many Christians and even pastors are affected by some people in their life. Najua wewe mahali hapo umekaa kuna mtu amekuadhiri katika maisha yako. And one person that affect them most sometimes is their spouse. Now, watu ambao wanaadhirika sana ni wale ambao wako katika ndoa mume anaweza adhiri mke wake ama mke adhiri mume wake. And then the people that are around us and also the members in the church. Na pia majirani walio karibu na sisi na pia waamini ama washirika wa kanisa zetu. And now I'm going to talk about how not to be affected by people and how to have joy and how to be blessed. Eh nataka kusunguzia jinsi unaweza kuepuka yale kuadhiriwa na watu na kuwa na furaha na pia upate kuwa bariki. In our in our church in Hong Kong we have some people every week there are people who came for help because they saw my videos online. Eh kule Hong Kong watu wa kwao wanaona katika eh, kanda hizi wanaziona kwa internet alafu wanakuja kanisa kwao kupokea mashauri now if you can get online you can look at youtube and facebook and look for pastor yip y i p na vile amezungumzia ukienda kwa twitter ukienda kwa kwa eh, facebook na youtube hizo hata kubadilisha kwa kiswahili sielewi utampata pale pastor yip uh, pastor uh, timothy yip No, 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 not Timothy. No. I didn't put Timothy there. Okay. Just put okay. Pastor Yip. Oh, Pastor Yip. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and then you can see many videos of teaching and also many people sharing what they experience. Na utaona nakala nyingi sana za runinga pale watu wakiendelea wakishauriwa. So many people came to us for counseling and for praying. Watu wengi wamekuja kwa kushauriwa na kuombewa. And I found that the one thing that affect most people are the people, the negative people around them. Na nimepata ya kwamba watu wengi ambao wanaadhirika ni wale watu ambao unawazia na pia wako kinyume chako ndio wanafanya unakuwa na ule uchungu. And for many Christians or even pastors The reason why they don't have much strength, much joy is because of people. Na sababu ambayo inafanya hao wachungaji wanakuwa wadhaifu na wanyonge ni kwa sababu wewe muamini ambaye unamdhuru maisha yake. So now I will talk about how we can handle it by the, uh, the teaching in the Bible. Kwa hiyo tunataka sasa kushiriki jinsi tunaweza kutumia neno la Mungu ili kushinda hii kuadhiriwa. Psalm 118 verse 6 Saburi 108 Saburi 118 mstari wa 6 Say twice every verse Saburi 118 mstari wa 6 The Lord is with me I will not be afraid What can people do to me Bwana yuko pamoja nami sitakuwa na uoga sitaogopa yale watu watanifanya So if God is for us is with us I will not be afraid of anything. Let me ask you who is more powerful God or people? 
Je, nawauliza ni nani ana nguvu? Ni Mungu ama watu? Kwa sauti we all know that God is more powerful. Najua ya kwamba Mungu ni mwenye nguvu sana. But people generally fear other people. Lakini watu wanaogopa wenzao. And are affected by them. Na tena wanaadhirika kwa ajili ya wenzao. And here it says what can people do to me? Na hapo Biblia inaendelea kusema wewe mwanadamu utanifanya nini? Do you believe that God has a plan in our lives? Yeah, if God has a plan in our life, will He protect us? Can people steal away what we have? For instance, I'm serving God with all my heart. Can people steal away the ministry? If I love God and follow God, no one can destroy God's plan. And okay, now if this represents a person, uh, wash it. He fixed the so that it won't blow toward you. This is a person. God's hand is over everyone. God can stop the person anytime he wants. Mungu anaweza kufanya yani usiwe hai wakati wote ama anaweza kusimamisha. Have you heard of the ship Titanus? Titanus, Titanus, the ship that was the big, the biggest ship, one of the biggest ship built. Okay, kuna many kubwa sana iliyojengwa. Kubwa sana umesikia hiyo jina? Titanus. And the people who built the ship, they said, no, even God cannot sink the ship. Have you heard of this story? Now, what will you jenga hiyo, hiyo, hiyo nini? Many, walizema hata mungu, hawezi kuzamisha hii. But this ship, they, when they said that no, even God cannot sink it, in the first trip, it sank. Now, when you say that you are going to be in the ship, when you are going to be in the ship, it will be in the ship. Because for anyone, if they say, I am powerful, I am almighty, God will say, I will see how powerful you are. For you, you are going to be in the ship, 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 have you heard of Bruce Lee? Yeah. Bruce Lee? You know, one of his last movie was The Game of Death. When he named the movie The Game of Death, God doesn't like it. Because death is not a game. And before Bruce Lee could finish the movie, he died. On the day when I was in Hong Kong and I saw it on the newspaper, Bruce Lee died and I said, now, I have a chance to meet someone who is afraid of Bruce Lee. And they were friends for childhood and they learned Kung Fu together for a while. Na walikuwa marafiki kutoka watoto na wakajifunza kumfu kucheza kumfu wale wale watu wa zamani wanajua And 
And this friend, you know, he saw Bruce Lee again, and Bruce, they just played the, uh, the uh, Kung Fu together. And Bruce Lee just showed him just by one kick. Now Bruce Lee, I can pick a on the moja. He flew away to over 10 feet away. Now Bruce Lee, I put people here, here on the moja, and he had to come up with a mission while he's tumba. And then this person, who is a Christian, said to him, "Would you think about believing in Jesus?" Now who you to amaya and I'm a mini Christian Jesus. I come on here today. We are going to be on a different career. Um, go, 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 Christian, go, Jesus. And Bruce Lee said, you know me, I don't need God. Now Bruce Lee, I don't need my Jesus. Now Bruce Lee, I don't need my Jesus. Now Bruce Lee, when Bruce Lee spoke in public on TV, he was very proud. Now Kipuri, he did not want any of Bruce Lee. He was so much of a ninja. He did not want my Jesus. Now me, he is son. He is very strong, you know, compared to most people. He is a little bit too big to be a man of God. He is a little bit too big. But when God took his life, he could do nothing. <laughs> so we need to believe that what can people do to me? If God is for me, I will not be afraid. And then Romans 8:31. Warumi nane salasina moja. Warumi nane salasina moja. If God is for us, who can be against us? Je, mungu akiwa upande wetu, ni nani atakuwa kinyume chetu? So if God helps us, who can fight against us? Ikiwa mungu hako upande wetu, ni nani anaweza kupigana na sisi? Even if they can hurt us physically, they cannot hurt our soul. Ndiyo, kumambini kwa nyama na damu wanaweza kukushika, lakini kufikia na usi yako ni mingunu sana. God is his he rules over everyone and every situation. Mungu anatawala kila kitu kila hali. Mungu ndiye mtawala. In the book of Genesis we saw the person Joseph. Katika kitabu cha Mwanzo tunamuona Yusuf. His brothers betrayed him. Ndugu zake walimuuza. But Joseph was able to handle that. He probably would have worry, fear, anger. Nio Yusufu alishangaza na vile alivyomuuza akawa ule uoga lakini akawa na ule ujasiri instead of worrying or being affected or being angry with God na badala ya kuwa na hasira na Mungu na hata kupungukiwa katika hali ya furaha he continued to have a close relationship with God aliendelea kuwa na uhusiano mzuri na Mungu let me ask you one question nauliza swali do you think Joseph was affected at the beginning? When he was sold, would he be affected? He would be affected. But he handled it very quickly. Because when he was in Egypt, Kwa sababu alipokuwa kule Misri in Genesis 39 verse 2 eh mwanzo 39 mstari wa 2 the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered Mungu alikuwa na Yusufu ili atajirike the Lord was with him that means he has a close, close relationship with God eh Mungu alikuwa pamoja naye kwa sababu alikuwa na uhusiano mzuri ama alikuwa na mwito wa Mungu so God's presence was strong with him and he, everything he did prospered. Even when his brothers want to get rid of him, God can protect him. And in Genesis chapter 15 verse 20, Mwanzo amsini mstari wa 20 Mwanzo amsini mstari wa 20 When he saw his brothers again he said to them Na wakati ndugu zake kulikuwa na jangwa kule kwa nja alipowaona kule Misri akawafurahia pia You intended to harm me but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives 
hii mlikuwa na nia kulimaliza lakini Mungu akawa na mpango mzuri ili niweze kuokoa watu wengi huyo Yusuf anazungumza kwa ndugu zake so his brothers would really at first want to kill him and later want to sell him get rid of him na ndugu zake walikuwa na mpango ili wapate kumua lakini wakaamua wacha wamuuze so they wanted to harm him walitaka wamwangalize but god intended for good lakini Mungu akawa na wazo nzuri juu ya Yusuf to accomplish the uh, the situation in Egypt ili apate kukamilisha hali iliyokuwa kule Misri and the saving of many lives na kuokoa nafsi nyingi and prepare the way for the future na kuanda eh, njia ya usoni now can you believe that when even when people try to harm you when you trust in God they cannot really harm you kama uamini kwamba hata kama mpango gani utapangwa juu yako ikiwa Mungu amekuchagua hakuna mtu atakaye kuangamisa the point is how can you do it eh swali ni kwamba je waweza kufanya nini because for most people when people yell at them immediately the reaction natural reaction is get angry eh kawaida ya mtu anapokusumbua vibaya kukugombanisha pia wewe pia ujibu yani kumuonyesha mimi naye si mdogo the way to handle it first we believe that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god eh cha kitu cha kwanza unatakana uelewe ni kwamba mwanadamu ametenda ame dhambi kwa hivyo amepungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu anayefanya hajui kile anachofanya hiyo ni warumi 3 mstari wa 23 warumi 3 mstari wa 23 watu wote wametenda dhambi so for people who don't learn to handle their lives the natural reaction is to yell at people kwa hivyo kwa wale ambao hawaana ile hekima ya kiungu hawaelewi jinsi ya mambo yanapowakabilia jinsi ya kusuluhisha hawana ile amani wanasuluhisha kwa uchungu the natural reaction of most people when things are not right then they will get angry hali ya kawaida ya mwili ikiwa uko katika mwili kujibu mtu utamjibu katika hali ya kugombana ama ya kujionyesha pia mimi ninafahamu kile nafanya let me ask you how many people do you know around you when things are not right when you have done something wrong they still are very peaceful and calm with you ni swali hili nakuuliza je kuna yeyote unayejua ndio anaathiriwa na na majirani wake lakini anakuwa na yule moyo wa kusamea na kuwa mtulivu kama unajua mtu yeyote unaweza kusimama na useme fulani namfahamu have you seen people like that around shaona mtu kama huyo karibu na wewe mdali sio mkundako kwa kwa matuma kuuzika ngoroka kwa mfumba If you see one person, person like that around you raise up one finger shall you see two then raise up two fingers is five and five okay. and then 10 or this like this and over 10 you raise up both hands okay how many people do you see kifanya kidole moja na wengine moja how many people do you see around you kifanya ambia you don't get angry easily ni watu wangapi ambao unafahamu ya kwamba hawakui na hasira haraka wanapokosewa kifanya kidole moja mtu moja mbili wawili every one of you can raise up one or two or three now five this will be five first mama majira wa ndwara no wala dinne ndo mbili so it's one two three okay now those two those people who don't get angry easily raise up your fingers kwa hivyo ikiwa unajua mtu yote ambaye anapokosewa anasamehea Hai chukua tu ya kumsitaki mtu kwa serikali ama kwa agriculture anasema Mungu atanipisha basi Come in come in raise up your fingers Some people raise up one finger that is the only so one person like that Wao tukiona kidole kimoja hivi inamaanisha ushaona mtu mmoja And most people don't raise up their hands or fingers na wengi ambao hawaelewi mikono yao. That is it's hard to find someone who don't get angry yeah. easily, right? Yeah, yeah, ali yao ni ngumu ya kupata mtu ambaye ana hasira haraka. Because all have seen and fall short of glory of God. Kwa sababu wote wametenda dhambi, wakapungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu. Because the wicked man from the wickedness in him what wickedness will come out. Hali ile ya uasi ambaye iko utu wa kale wakati anakosewa lazima ichupuke na upate kwa uso wake na kunyamana na kiongea na dia wengine 
Even for Christians, most Christians don't pay attention to their anger. Oh, sorry. Well, at our Christo way, who are her? How is Luigi Le Ayao, Yakuan Asira, or Gaduan Apostel? Now, why do so many people have not learned? Why they haven't learned this? To handle their negative emotions. Ni kwa sababu gani hatujakuwa na hali ya kuelewa wakati tuna hasira ili tuwe na hali ya utulivu. One big reason is that we don't pay attention to ourselves and analyze ourselves why I do that. Mara nyingi haujitambui wewe mwenyewe kwa nini unaingia katika hii hali ya hasira wewe mwenyewe. Most people just say, well he did something wrong, therefore I yell at him. Wengu wetu tutasema pana and they did not ask themselves, do I have to get angry? And what would happen if I get angry? So that's why many people do have not learned how to handle themselves. I thank God for the experience of the infill of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reminds me to handle any negative feelings. Rom takatifu anakusaidia kuelewa kila haliyote ilio kinyume ambayo haiwezi kumtukuza mungu. And then when I notice the negative feeling, immediately I use the five steps to victory. Na wakati anapogundua hali ile ambayo si ya kiume inataka kumwingia hasira anatumia sehemu tano zile tulizojifunza. I'm aware of my feelings. My, my, I'm aware of the five steps to victory we talked about this morning. I'm aware of my negative feelings. I'm jambo la kwanza inahitajika ujielewe. And then secondly I know it's destructive. Na ajira kwamba ni uharibifu. Because I treasure my life. After experience of the Holy Spirit, I want the best to come out from my life. I don't want to waste my life. And then number three, what does the Bible teach us to do? The Bible, teaches, the Bible teaches us to rejoice in the Lord always. And then number four, I pray to for forgiveness and for strength. And then number five, I choose not to be angry. Na ya tano, anamuwa kwamba asiwa na shiko na asira. I choose to say it doesn't matter if something is not done right. Wewe wa musi wako kusema haijalishi hata kama ni kubaya, mimi itabaki na amani na mungu wangu. Can you say this? If something is not done right, it's okay. Unaweza kusema hivi? Hata kama kitu atijafanyo mizuri, ni sawa tu. Can you say it? Tunia. Hata kama kitu wa kujafanyo mizuri, ni sawa. Turudia sisi wote. Okay, another way, another way you can say, if something is not done right, I will not die from it. Ndina unaweza kusema kama kitu wa kujafanyo sawa, si itakufa kwa sababu ya hiyo jambo. You can say, Naweza kurudia kama kitu hakijafanywa vizuri sitakufa kwa ajili ya hilo. So I learned even when people mistreat me I say it doesn't matter. Wao wamejifundisha hata wakati watu wake wanambi haki yeye kila mara anakuwa na ile uhusiano mzuri na Mungu. God will give it back to me. Mungu atamrejeshea ile amani. And when I learn to love even our enemies, then yeah. God is happy with me. And God will bless me. Mungu I choose to listen to God and not to men. Anaua kumsikiliza Mungu sio kusikiliza wanadamu. Now of course I listen to good opinions of, of people. Lakini hata hiyo usikiliza mawasia hiyo na busara. 
But I've accepted that people, sinful people, very often they can speak negatively. Lakini amejifundisha kwamba watu walio katika mwili ama wa dini husumuza mambo kinyume na uzuri. And God told me a simple way. Mungu akampa njia rahisi. Don't eat garbage. Say say. Usikule usikale. Usikule uchafu. Say. Usikule. Yeah, usikule uchafu. Okay. So this person he says something negative. Wewe anasema kinyume chako. He said you are foolish. Ana kutusi anamwambia wewe mjinga wewe. Do I suddenly become very foolish? Ah, usijaze na ile nguvu za za ujinga na kuanza eh kuwa na asira. No, what he said has no power. Kile amesema hakiko na nguvu kwa maisha yako. So what he said I don't have to take it. Ile amesema usichukue kuwa ni sehemu ya maisha yako. But most people take it very seriously. Lakini watu wakiwa anatusiwa anaichukua kuwa sehemu yake na sasa inaanza kumdhuru. He said I'm foolish. I'm a foolish. Hey, umenita mchina na mimi mwerefu na unampiga teke tu. And then we we want to fight back. Tao unakuwa na uchungu unataka kupiga tena. We say it's unfair. Nasema wewe unanijua sio hivyo mimi si mjinga. How can you talk to me like that? Unaweza kuniongelesha hivyo kwa nini? Because we feel it's unfair. Kwa sababu wajisikia kudurishwa na hautakani kudharauliwa. But the more we are angry, the more we will lose. Lakini wakati tunapokuwa na hasira vile unaelewa hasira sana. And I found that when I don't take the negative words of people Actually, I get more joyful and peaceful. Na amelea kwamba unapowacha kuchukulia hali ile inasimuziwa kinyume chako unakuwa yani furaha yako inaongezeka katika Mungu. Okay, and I'm going to talk about one real situation I think in many countries in Africa, not just Kenya. Tangu simuzikusimulia hadithi jia hali fulani lakini sana sana katika nchi zetu za Afrika. I asked Washington, why do you call my wife mama? You know, she has no children. We don't have children. Okay. Alimuliza nungu yetu, kwa nini unaita mke wangu mama? Na atuna watoto. And when, one time I brought a few sisters to Kenya also, and they all talked to them and say, mama. And none of them were married. Okay. Na nafikiria kuna wageni wanitoka kule kwa wakingia huku. Na sisi vile tuna ile neno na heshima kuita mama na wale walikuwa nafikiria kama wasichana wakaona eh na tunaitwaje mama and people told me in africa everyone from the certain age they must get married na wanasema kwamba katika hapa afrika mtu akifikia kiwango kikoma eh, miaka fulani ni lazima aoneke ama aoe if they don't get married the people will despise them ikiwa hata oleka hata dharauliwa and you know in Hong Kong there no there is no such situation lakini kule kwao usipoolewa ama usipooa si shida when people don't find a christian you know that love them they won't get married wa wa kule kwao wasipopata wa kristo ambao wameokoka ili wapate kuwaoa basi hawaoleki Or if they don't find a good Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they won't get married. Or if they find a Christian, they wasipotaka kuoneka na kuoneka ni kuzuri and sometimes a man has an affair and a woman still stay married even though the man really doesn't care about the family anymore okay la ajabu ni kwamba hapa Kenya ama wa Afrika uko na mke unawacha wake mke na watoto wako mke ni anatafutia watoto na wewe unaenda kwa mke wa kando mpango wa kando and according to the bible if the man has committed adultery the woman is free to go lakini unajua kulingana na neno la Mungu ikiwa wewe mwanaume ama mwanamke utafanya usinifu utafanya usinifu bali basi mama ana haki ya kukuacha said that if, you know, if the man leaves, then the woman will have no position in the society 
Na ndugu alimwambia ikiwa huku utatoka uende hautakuwa na nafasi katika jamii za Afrika. Because people might speak against her and say she has she's not very Eh kwa sababu watu watasungumza juu yake kwa sababu yeye hajaoleka. But many people know that when they go to get married the marriage is not going to be a good marriage but they still get married. Na kila ajabu unaweza kujua kabisa ile ndoa unaenda kufunga hiyo ndoa si ndoa nzuri lakini unalazimika kwa sababu ya hali na utamaduni wetu. And the pain every day when there is fighting yelling in the home is much bigger than if he's not married. Now she's not married. Na unakuwa na uchungu katika ile ndoa ile kidonda kidoki akitoki kwa sababu unaendelea kuwaza singeoleka hata kwa hii jamii lakini uko pale kwa sababu ya hali. But most women think well if I don't get married people will despise me. Wake wengi ama wasichana wengi wanafikiria nisipooleka watu watanudharao. So that is a typical way of how people are affected by what other people think of them. Hiyo ndio hali nyingine ambayo wewe ndugu ama wewe dada ambao ungali kijana ina inadhuru watu kwa sababu unaogopa kumngojea bwana wakati wa ndoa yako. In first Corinthians chapter 7, wa Korinto wa kwanza mlango wa 7 Paul talk about being single is good because you have freedom to serve God. Paul anasungumzia ikiwa inawezekana unaweza kuwa peke yako ili uweze kumtumikia Mungu vizuri. But he said not everyone has the ability to stay single. Lakini Biblia inaendelea pia kusema sio wote wanaweza kuwa peke yao pasipo kuolewa kwa sababu uenda hauna huo utaua wa kujilinda ukiwa peke yako. And then if you can stay single you can concentrate on your, your ministry. And ili unapo kuwa peke yako unaweza kuwa na nafasi nzuri ya kumtafuta Mungu na huduma wako upate kuendelea. That's a clear teaching in the Bible. Hiyo ni maandiko katika Biblia. Agano jipya tena. But many people still get married because they are afraid of other people what other people think of them. Ya kwamba watu wengi wa Afrika wanaoleka kwa sababu wanaogopa hali ya wengine kuadharao. Let me ask you how many girls here are not married? How many Okay, Rijana chukizi ambao hujaolewa, wasichana. How many girls are not married? Wewe msichana hujaoleka. Keep going for you. Okay? Let me ask you. Yeah, Junior. Do you think Let me ask you. Ana uliza swali. Do you think you must get married? Hey, ana uliza je? Unawaza kabisa ungeipenda kuolewa? Now you say no. Sai unasema hapana. Then when it comes to your points, lakini takapofikia wa mama wamekukalia vizuri, when there is a non Christian says to you I want to marry you. Na mtu ambaye hajaokoka atakapokuchia kuambia tagoa. Or your parents say to you I have a friend you to marry is a non Christian. Ama wengine wanakusumzia ili upate kuolewa na mkristo mwingine. I'll ask you now, are you willing to say, if the person is not a Christian, he's not a good Christian, I will not marry him? What did I say to you, a child, and swallowing your head? Now, Kubayana, a Kwamba, Mutu, Akiwa, and Amalia, and Gari, was about family in Ampeda, Lakina, and Okoka, when I'm going to be a whatever name, Takata, Amota Kubai. Okay, I hope. Are you willing to teach your people that it's okay to be single? Je, kujiare kufundisha wa mimi wenu ambao ni vijana ya kwamba ni vizuri kutolea kuoleka. If they don't find a Christian, they should not marry a non-Christian. Ikiwa hawata mpata mkristo kijana ambaye anaogoka ni vizuri waendelee kukaa tu hivyo. And if a Christian has serious problem, don't marry the Okay. So this is one example. Many people are affected 
find what other people think of them. Okay, hili ni zoezi katika eh, hali yetu ya Kiafrika ambayo inadhuru wakina ndugu hata na wadada wakati mtu haoleki ama haole haoi. Okay? Now, so if a person is single, many people say she's single or she has no husband. So when people say that you are single, will you die for them? Will you die because you are It's hard to handle that. If you face a difficult okay. Now, I will talk about how not to be affected by people. Let me ask you, the people around you, do they, if they yell at you a lot, do they change easily? ana <laughs> No, they don't change easily. No, uh, okay, I but listen to Let me ask you. How many people around you that you have seen change? If you see one person change, you raise up one finger. Five people change, you raise up five fingers. How many people you see around you change? A non-Christian. I mean non-Christian, they change. Non-Christian. Raise up your fingers. Non-Christian change. How about the other people? Do you see non-Christian change? Okay, just a few people. Let me ask you a second question. How many Christians that you see change, you see real change in their lives. How many Christians? Okay, let me ask you a question. I don't mean in the church, in the church you see too many Christians. But in your home, or, or the neighbors, how many Christians do you see around you? Okay, so let's say you are a Christian. Change for good. I mean, raise your finger. Okay, thank you. Let me ask you this. Do all Christians change? No. Many Christians don't change. Because it is hard for people to change. Let me ask you, how much have you changed? If you change a lot, do this. If you change very little, do this. Hallelujah. It's how much you're willing to submit to God. Okay, now, if you're not willing to submit to God, 
So I discern that my life is more important than the negative words they say. If I, if I think it's unfair, I'll say it doesn't matter. 
Nitazama haijalishi unajua mama umepatikana wanasema umepatikana katika usinifu na huku sisi wewe acha kuwa na kelele because God will give it back to me kwa sababu Mungu atakurejeshea Now I have many many experiences like that. Ah, na ujuzi ujuzi mwingi katika maisha yako. Actually it has been for years that I have to face negative words constantly every day. Ni kwa miaka nyingi amepata watu wakisumuza kinyume chake. But then the Lord has taught me after experience of Holy Spirit not to be affected by them. Na Mungu ameweza kumuelezea kwamba yeyote atakayesumuza kinyume chako usiwe na wasiwasi katika ile furaha ya Bwana even recently you know i have been cheated by christians hi juzi tu nimedanganywa na wale wanaitwa wandugu even by ministers hata watumishi ambao ni makasisi na mapastors wa inglesi wamemdanganya but i said that's a matter ah kasema hiyo haijalishi because god will final God knows the truth. Ni mshoe ukweli utapatikana. I just do what I can do. Nafanya kile ninaweza kufanya. I don't carry any anger. Na si si baby ile asira. And I want to handle it with peace. Na nataka nisimishe mambo yangu katika amani. Okay? Now I'm going to talk about situation when you do suffer physically from the person taka kusumuzia hali ambayo unaathirika kiafya ama kimwili for instance you marry someone who yells at you all the time ah reza kwa umemua mama ama baba ambaye kila wakati ndio mtuza huko yeye chera samia ila nubyo it's different from someone else of the family hiyo ni tofauti na mtu akiwa nje ya ndoa Someone else are filming. I don't have to see him all the time. Okay, um to ambaye apo nje ya 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 Noah si rahisi kukutana naye. But someone in the family we have to face them and they can Lakini wale wako katika jamii zetu ni kila wakati tunakutana nao dakika kwa dakika. They can do things to hurt us. Wanachukua vitu ambavyo vinatudhuru. And they can take the what money away also. Na pia wanachukua nini pesa zetu. There are two parts. Kuna sehemu mbili. One part is how not to be affected by them emotionally. Ya kwanza ni kule kutoadhirika kimsisumuko ama hisia. And the second part is how to protect ourselves in this situation. Na hali ya pili ni jinsi ya kujilinda katika hali kama ile. Or how to handle a certain problem. Ya ama njia ya kusuluhisha shida zingine. Okay, the way to not to be affected is Just what I said earlier that we don't eat the garbage. And njia kusuluhisha ni vile tu tumesema mapema ya kwamba usikule uchafu. Whatever he said does not matter. Ah, chochote wanachosunguza kuhusu isikudhuru. But it is very difficult when you are married to that person. Lakini mkiwa katika ndoa mume kwa mke ni ngumu sana. So I encourage you don't just marry anyone. Hai, oh, tafadhali ninakuhisi usioe tu mtu yeyote. You to seek God, God's guidance. Muombe Mungu ili akupe mwelekeo. Okay. So, even the husband keep yelling then you say the Lord loves me. Ho, oh, ikiwa baba atasumuza kwa hali ya, ya moyo mkubwa ama sauti kubwa, ambia Mungu mshikilie hiyo moyo wake na nishikilie nipe amani. I don't have to be affected. Stuck in what they can. And the Lord can give me joy. Mungu atanipa ile amani ya mafurah. And then we can rejoice in the Lord and praise the Lord to God. Ah, utafurahia ndani ya Bwana na utamtukuza Bwana. Okay, that's how we that we don't get affected. Hivyo ndivyo unaweza kuishi maisha ya aina hiyo na usi usi usiwe na madhara katika hali ya ulimwengu wa kiroho. But how about if he peace the people in a home or steal money what can we do oh kama huyu mtu anaiba pesa anapiga watu katika familia tufanye nini then is a matter of handling the problem ni hali tu ya kusumuzia hiyo hali there are serious problems and there are less serious problems okay kuna shida nyingi na kuna kusuluhisha kidogo their husbands they are not so bad but they are they're bad but not very bad kuna wengine waume zao sio wabaya sana lakini wabaya 
Then we try to be nice, and then maybe by being nice, we can change the person. Mama, but this idea of you can be some say, you will change who is she that you are. But if the person is very bad, like you will go to a buyer son. You should seek the help of the pastor or people in the church. Where is that? We have to show up. We have to go home to God. I'm a boy who goes to a place. In some situation, if the husband comes home every day and beats you up and steals money. Or have, a, or have a woman outside. Oh, and I look as good as one here. I want to say now, the Bible says if he is a woman, we don't have to stay married. Hey, what we here? The car carrier, she will show me my new motor. But we can ask. But we can ask God for strength and love to change the husband. Lakini tunaweza muuliza ule mwanadada au ana katika hali ya kuwa katika uungu na kuomba nguvu kutoka kwa Mungu. But even but when we try our best and love him and he still doesn't change and he still continue to destroy the family then we can take steps. Okay. Na kwa njia nyingine mama umejitoa kabisa unamwombea huyu mzee lakini anaendelea kukupiga basi ukiona hali haieleweki chukua hatua ya kufikia serikali. So if a person has a woman outside if it's continue to be very the problem very serious in this case the bible says that we can have a divorce. Okay, wewe fino kutejia bahasa rangi lakini lano ikiwa wewe una mwanaume ambaye anaenda nje na inafika mahali ambapo unaamua unataka kuacha hiyo ndoa basi ni juu yako. But some of them say, if I divorce, if I have divorce, people will laugh at me. Na wengine wetu tutasema kwamba ikiwa nitawacha mume wangu, eh watu watanicheka. But I will tell you. Lakini nakwambia. If you suffer like this every day, ikiwa utakuwa kwa mateso ya aina hiyo. It's worse than being laughed at by people. Ya kwamba watu watanichekelea. And if a person really beat you up to hurt you and can kill you, Mikalo msata unatiru upa na nyalu huira. Now the Bible does not say that, but then, with the common sense, if someone is going to beat you every day, we cannot stand that. Then there is a right to have divorce too. Mikalo mnu na la upa anga muri sana manya kabeza matimo nguo kula na kupa kare muri ya nolo au nwa no karusia. Lakini mikali shau manya tawe wa na ita na kaya ora msata. Or if he steals all the money at home, every time your money he steals. Then you cannot stay together. Okay, for each situation, there are different ways to handle it. The main thing is that we keep our peace in the Lord. Handle it in a godly way. And we choose to forgive and have compassion on the other person. Okay. Now I talk about different situation. Co-workers together. And then cannot work together harmoniously. Na mahali ambapo nafikia pengine sisi wachungaji hatuwezi kufanya kwa nyumba ya Mungu pamoja. How can we handle it? Je, na hatua gani tunaweza kuchukua? The two parts. First, how not to be affected emotionally. Kuna njia mbili jinsi ya kuto kuadhirika katika hali ya msusumko. And number two, how to handle the problem with the coworker. Na je, pili ni vile tunaweza kusuluhisha sisi wachungaji katika nyumba ya bwana tukiwa tunafanya kazi pamoja again not to be affected emotionally is what i talked about before even if the coworker has done something wrong i don't have to be angry na tumezungumzia kwamba kama hautakuwa katika ile hali ya hisia ikiwa mtu amemtenda kazi mwenjapo amekukosea usiwe na katika hali ya kuwa na hasira if we find we have anger it's better to go and pray and praise the lord until we have peace before we talk kiwa utakuwa katika hali yako unasikia uchungu na una ile hasira tafadhali enda tu kwa ukuta na upige magoti uanze kwa kuomba mungu ili akupatie ile amani I've seen people, pastors, they handle problem in the church with a, a co-worker. Nimeona watu wakisuluhisha ama wakisuluhisha shida katika kanisani na watenda kazi pamoja nao. 
He handles it with anger. Uh, and then the co-worker told the members, Pastor was angry with me, and then many of the members left with the co-worker. Okay. 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 So, first thing is, we keep the peace in the Lord. We don't have to be angry. Anger doesn't help at all. Anger doesn't help at all. Anger makes things worse. 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 So first we can talk, say great words of grace. God loves you, God wants to do great things. God wants to do great things in our church. And then you can say, I've seen a problem in our church now. So we say a certain situation. And what do you think about that? Now, now, Lisa, can Lisa try to find a meaning? Now, sometimes a person might say, "Well, it's because of what you did. You did something wrong." Now, mungi na atasema na kwamba ni kwa sababu ya ile kosa ulio fanya ni kwa sababu vitu viko vibaya. Even as a senior pastor, if we have done something wrong, we should also apologize. Hata sisi makasisi na wachungaji na wajilisi, ikiwa tumefanya kitu chochote kibaya, ila si matukubali mele za mungu. And then we'll ask, okay, now when we see this situation, how will it affect our church? And how can we handle it? How can we resolve the problem? Now for this handling is there are many ways. Katika hii hali ya kuongea ama kusulisha kuna njia nyingi ambayo Mungu anaweza kupatia mwelekeo. Sometimes it's good to have a few leaders together to discuss how to handle the problem. Jambo la kwanza tunaweza kuwa na viongozi wachache ambao wana hekima na maarifa chini ya kusimumzia katika nyumba ya Bwana. But the main thing is that we're not affected emotionally. Eh kitu cha kwanza ni kwamba Ha, 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 ha,